I'm going to start off the call today uh, to kind of review really quickly on module one. I, I think everyone's on board. It's a very, um, what we discussed in the past module is fairly uh, simplified. So I just want to review and make sure everyone's on the same baseline. Um, as we talked about in the past, there's going to be really four components to uh, the Indeni architecture. Um, it's going to be the collector and the server components. Uh, the collector component has the interrogation and the monitoring scripts. These are probably going to be our biggest emphasis because obviously when you're adding new devices to the Indeni, we'll need to build out these interrogation scripts so that we know how to read them properly. Um, likewise with monitoring, um, that's how we're going to be able to parse the data from your devices. Um, another thing to keep in mind uh, is uh, the server component and how we have rule templates in place. So try to uh, copy as much as you can from what we have on our rule templates. Um, if it requires uh, some sort of customization. We'll definitely discuss that in later modules, uh, I believe, a little bit. We'll talk about the rules and how Scala works a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, just a tiny bit. But our main focus, uh, for the most part, is going to be on the collector part. Um, one thing I wanted to note is, uh, you know, Liz and I were kind of hashing this out. We were trying to understand how do tags get identified for the monitoring component of the Indeni system. And so uh, when you first initiate the Indeni and you have a connect to a device, it goes ahead and goes through the interrogation scripts. You guys are very well aware of that. It goes ahead and writes tags on certain values that they, we want to uh, identify. But those tags then get placed into, um, uh, for lack of better words, a device entity table. And that device entity table is stored actually on the collector component. So, um, you know how we talked about how the collector and most of the scripts are stateless? Well, it actually maintains um, the device tags on the collector component um, primarily, and then it syncs and provides a, another backup on the server component. So every time you connect to a new device or every time the uh, Indeni instance fails to connect to uh, the instance for a uh, device for a while and it tries to reinitiate the connection, it will go through the interrogation phase. So that's how, uh, for your reference, how those tags are getting written, how, when they get updated, and when they get appended into the current device tag, uh, you know, table, so to speak. Given that information, uh, we actually have a, a logical process um, where we basically define certain tags that are uh, prerequisites for a lot of these uh, scripts. So in here, I'm showing you an aux script uh, for uh, our demo, which is the Acme hardware uh, humidifier. Um, over here, there's a requirement that we're going to go in depth later, but these requirements are actually the tags that we wrote in the interrogation scripts. And when you outline them here, the Indeni instance will build a logic to understand that given the vendor for Acme and for the product humidifier, we will run a series of certain scripts that require those tags uh, under the monitoring script. So um, that's built, built, baked in into the intelligence of the collector component. Um, all you have to do is, you know, basically dump those parsing scripts into uh, um, a file path that we'll talk about later, actually. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a quick high-level overview on that and give you guys some more context on that component. Let's go ahead and start the module two. What we're going to be going over today is going to be primarily on the collector component. That's all we're going to really talk about. Uh, we're going to we did a quick review session, which is great. Uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about the interrogation scripts and the modeling scripts, how they're different. Um, there's small nuances that you should be aware of. Uh, we'll start talk talking about scripting framework, and by that I mean the mental framework on how to approach scripting using Indeni. Um, that way you don't get stuck on, you know, uh, how to approach the right uh, methodology for building out the scripts. Um, we'll talk about a little bit, you know, a little more in depth into that. You know, we obviously want to focus on running commands that will have the least impact to the devices. So there's some strategy involved in designing um, the right script. Um, we're going to talk about do's and don'ts about metrics and tags. Um, the reason that being is that there's some metrics and tags that are reserved for the R&D team, some things that you should be aware of, and also just um, other things that you guys have available to you when you're building out your scripts. 
Um, then we're going to talk about how to be a copycat. I think that will help you a lot when you're building out these alerts. And then finally, the best part is how to simulate some of these uh, in any scripts using Command Render. Um, there's going to be an extra credit part. Again, not necessary, but as you'll see, um, you know, after we you understand how to use Command Runner, this will really you know pivot you guys to uh, get on board fast. Um, so let's move on. So as we talked about in the past, the Indenti Collector has two components. One of them is the interrogation script, and the way I like to call it is, or actually Yanni uh, Yanni called it this. It's the 20 question game. Um, it basically is going to identify everything from product, vendor, serial number model number, operating system, the name, the version, um, if it's in a cluster, and all these things are going to be necessary to determine what kind of uh, monitoring scripts to run. So, you know, we've got, we've beaten the horse on this quite a bit, so let's go and uh, dive into an actual Indeni interrogation script we have right now. And I, uh, I come from the Cisco world, um, I, I have a CCNA, so I, this is the most relevant for me to understand uh, how the interrogation scripts work. Um, so let's say in this scenario, we connect to a Cisco device. What we don't know, and a lot of you guys will probably be very familiar with this, is that you don't know if whether or not that device is running as a layer two or a layer three device. And so that actually runs into, uh, uh, becomes a problem for us when it comes to interrogating the device because we, don't, we care more about just knowing the model number. We need to know how it's used contextually in the architecture. Is it doing layer two or layer three? Um, and so when you're interrogating a device, uh, here's a component right here. It's called the uh, meta component. And right here, you, under, uh, you outline the name of the script. You give it a description. You define the type, which in this case is interrogation. And then you define the tags that are necessary to run the script. Now, what we didn't talk about before is that there's some interrogation scripts that are run after uh, tags are identified. So if we run a command to know if it's a Cisco device with iOS, we will then subsequently uh, interrogate the device using this script as well. Then on this component, we define what's the, uh, the mechanism that we're going to be communicating over, whether it's SSH or HTTP. Um, obviously, this is a Cisco IOS, so we're going to do SSH and then run CLI commands. And we also would advise to provide documentations uh, on things that we're looking out for. So right here we documented do uh, commands usually not found on switches. Um, especially uh, when we're running the command, we want to see if those outputs come out. Um, so let's move along. As you can see, there is going to be a definition on this part on how we parse it. So the reason I'm going through this and I'm kind of narrating over it is because each component is going to be important to build the Indeni script. You need a meta component, you need the remote component, and by the way, this is uh, case sensitive, so make sure that you are, you know, word by word and structure by structure following how this is uh, temp uh, templated. Um, but in the parsing component, we're defining what uh, parsing mechanism we're going to use. Um, even though we sometimes run commands over SSH, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to parse the data over awk. It might be a more structured output like XML. So we also need to define that here. So as you can see, um, those are the four main components to focus on. The actual scripting takes place immediately after the parser, um, uh, after you invoke the parser command here. Uh, right here, you start um, putting in your scripts. As you can see with the iOS, we um, are looking for specific things on the output. We're going to use a regex pattern um, on all outputs that include Cisco iOS software. And then we're going to look at several things and at, uh, attach them to certain values. Um, I'm going to overgeneralize a little bit, you know, just in case people aren't uh, really familiar with the iOS. But um, what we're doing here is basically looking at the output. And if it has certain configurations that are unique to layer three, then we'll define it as being a, uh, as being a router. But otherwise, if there are more than two uh, commands that are missing that are unrecognized, we will then go ahead and assign it a tag of being a switch. On top of that, we go ahead and write other tags, such as being the product, the serial number, the iOS, and so on. 
Um, so, you know, I just wanted to show you the interrogation script, how it looks like. Uh, very similar to the monitoring script, but there's going to be small nuances to pay attention to. Just going back, uh, let's move along. Let's talk about the monitoring script a little bit. Um, as we mentioned before, these monitoring scripts are going to be executed based on the tags that were provided by the interrogation script. So, after the initial phase of the interrogation, the indenti instance will then go ahead and start running these, uh, these scripts. Make sure that the tags are, are, uh, are outlined in the interrogation scripts, otherwise the monitoring will just not work uh, in a real live uh, environment. Um, another thing to man mention here is that the indenti collector is stateless. Uh, we've talked about this before. So if you, um, if when you're considering how to build these scripts, make sure to account the fact that when you're building the script, you do not maintain any, uh, any information in the Denny script where the monitor, monitoring script has to remember over a series of multiple intervals. So in that instance, when you are running the script, you should be able to run a, by the end of it, run a command that will um, push a value immediately that the server or the rules will be able to recognize. So uh, just keep that in mind. And so when we're going to look, we're going to look at the sample monitoring script. But while we're doing this, I actually want to navigate through Bitbucket and show it to you. So you're going to be getting very familiar with this very quickly, uh, probably more than I will. Um, but when we go to the source, this is where we have our master, well, our current build of scripts that are uh, have been merged into the master file. You'll see that there's an, uh, a way to navigate through this. So branches are going to be mainly the location where you will be working your script in. And then later on, you would then commit it or push or pull, uh, make a request to merge your scripts into the master, which is the source. So let's look at here, navigate through the parser uh, uh, domain. And let's go to, again, Cisco. Uh, that's where I'm more familiar with. I do apologize if you guys want to look at more uh, XML type uh, parsing. We'll go over that with Yanni, actually. Um, so let's do this one. So after we've identified uh, what kind of a device it is, uh, the vendor and all the interrogation scripts are run, you'll see here that you'll define the type of the script as being monitoring. There's nothing really different from a template standpoint of uh, how to invoke each of these components. So obviously, still needs to be, uh, you know, hashtag uppercase space meta. Um, make sure it's uh, uppercase uh, as always. Um, you always need, are going to require a name, a description, a type. The monitoring interval will define how frequently this uh, script runs on the on the collector component, and then um, again the tags that are required for this script to run. This part is going to be a little different in the, uh, monitoring, uh, in the monitoring scripts. And the reason we add this is because we're actually trying to create a documentation of why we are running these scripts. And if, they, if, if we're running them, how are we running them? And if, is it possible without indenting? So as you can see here, we outline uh, the why, the how, the without indenting component. And then we also want to know if we can run it through SNMP or if it can be run through uh, if you can be, you can find this information through syslog. Um, this is going to be uh, over time. This database will be able to help us identify what are the key best sellers, you know, not uh, and uh, what are the things that Indeni are looking out for that can't be found through SNMP monitoring solutions right now. So documentation is going to be really important on the monitoring scripts. Uh, we, the person that did this one, uh, actually, I don't know who it was. I don't know if I can pull it up here. Oh, it looks like it was uh, Dimitris who was the last one that updated it. But um, he did a really good job with documentation and define each different output and what we're looking for. Um, so we're hopefully looking for something like this. Uh, and I think uh, Liz will definitely go over that in much better detail. Um, again, invoke the uh, communication method and invoke what kind of parsing mechanism that's being utilized. Then go ahead and run your scripts here in the awk component. Um, it's advised that when you're uh, for each line of code that you can kind of outline what this script, uh, what this part of the awk script is running. So we want to document that as much as possible. So based on 
this, uh, this input of an aux script, what would be the designated output of that? Um, and so, yeah, Dimitri actually did a really good job in providing that here. Um, let's see, anything else? No. Um, I think when it comes to actually aux scripting, I'm going to move along to the rest. Um, it's going to be important to um, try doing some exercises on your own outside of Indeni. It'll help you kind of understand how it works if you haven't used Auk before in the past. Um, I do have some references that you could try. There, there are a lot of uh, daily exercises, uh, challenges that you can um, try to uh, achieve through using Auk. I'll show you in a bit. But let's start looking at the Ike framework and how the collector, uh, how you should think about when you're building scripts for the collector component. And we've tried to break it down and simplify it as much as possible. What is the issue you're trying to catch? And how do I check for the issue? What are the commands that you run for it? And how do I make sure that those commands are the least impactful to the device, considering that these are production environments? Most importantly, what are the outputs I care about? And how do I measure the output? Is it going to be a binary? Is there a counter apply to it? Do you, uh, do you look at it and compare it against something else? Is it threshold based? Um, how can I track, the, track this output regularly in intervals? So we talked about it in the past, but um, one of the, some of the most miscellaneous things about the awk based and Denny scripts is to make sure you have documentation on the reasoning. It's really important for us to understand why we're doing this uh, in plain text and plain English. Uh, and we also want to make sure that you adhere to the required structure because it's very keen sensitive. And um, actually, something I forgot to add is that you see those, I'm oh, sorry, you see the blank space here. It is actually not a tab, it's actually four spaces. So every time you're indenting or you're adding to these values such as name, description, type, and monitoring interval, you have to t uh, you, you'll have to press tab four or space four times and do the same for uh, vendor and OS name. So this is actually space sensitive. Yeah, just in the beginning. Um, actually, something to note uh, if you're not familiar with awk, it's not space or uh, uh, indentation sensitive, so you can play around with that as much as you want. It actually helps us if you space out your scripts as you saw before um, to, uh, to provide us uh, better context and make it easier for us to read. Um, one very last thing, I'm going to hammer this uh, every single time, is to properly tag the devices during interrogation. I know with a lot of, um, a lot of our new uh, Ike buddies, we are looking at adding these new devices that you know, we currently don't interrogate. So it's going to be, this is going to be probably a fundamental uh, process that we are going to be uh, hounding on uh, regularly. So using awkward parsing, uh, if, uh, if you are familiar with it, we are using the most basic awk language. There aren't any add-ons. We aren't using SAD. We aren't using anything else beyond that. Um, You'll notice that some awk scripts are not defined functions that are fundamental to awk. We actually define them in the helper uh, awk uh, file that we have in uh, both in Denny and Command Runner. So um, the reason I bring this up is that when you are starting to simulate these things through Command Runner, and I'll explain uh, why you would want to do it through Command Runner, um, those functions are going to be available to you. So uh, if you want to see an example of some of these functions available, let me quickly look at the Confluence page and navigate to it. Um, I actually have this all available in the syllabus. If you guys need it in just one in a single document, you definitely take a look at that later. Um, but let's go ahead to metrics. And here are some of these predefined metrics that we have um, provided. So the most common one is being double metrics. These are basically numbers. Anything that's text literal would be uh, complex metrics. Um, the tags are very straightforward. Uh, we just need to assign certain things to it. One thing I wanted to add, and actually, wait one second. OK, we'll go over that in a bit. But let's go to the contribution. Go to any uh, script formats, block parser. There it is. So if you go to this page, you'll see all our helper functions that we defined for awk already. So these functions are, uh, you know, we'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to leverage using command runner. 
And a lot of them are pretty key, especially when it comes to identifying date or date time. Um, there's a lot of different ways how this will be useful for you instead of having to create your own functions on the indenti script. Um, less is more, I think that's the key, uh, the key uh, ideology, uh, ideology here. Um, below are some resources for you guys to uh, leverage if you're uh, if you want to get up to speed with Oc, um, Gr uh, Grimoire. I think that's a pr proper way to uh, pronounce it. I'm sorry if I'm butchering the language, but um, uh, use that especially uh, as a quick high-level overview of the Oc. Uh, you know what are some of the functions that you can use right right off the bat with um, the Oc language. What things may be required using the Oc helper that we have. Um, then, uh, if you want to take a look, Linda has a great um, training, uh, you know, quick, like basically 10, 30 minute overview of how AUK works. And then HackerRank is really useful for running uh, a couple exercises for you to see if you're comfortable with using AUK. So those are the do's about AUK parsing. Here are the don'ts. Do not use uh, any of the reserved tags and metrics. I'll show you right here real quick. But that was actually right here under this part of the navigation of the Confluence page. These are reserved metrics that we are using right now for some of our unique alerts. And because of that, if you were to run into this, um, you would generate a, another alert that may not be uh, coinciding with what you're looking into. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, you won't break the device, but I think you'll start generating some of these random alerts that aren't part of building uh, these new scripts for you. And there's some tags that are also identified here. Um, just keep a lookout for them. Uh, they're quite a lot, um, but get familiar with which ones you can use and which ones you can't. Okay. Um, some are actually uh, considered known metrics, and those are actually leveraged uh, those are actually leveraged uh, for us as a regular basis. So um, if you use these metrics and these tags, they, might, they may be already associated to a rule template, and that may be easier for you to immediately enable uh, a new alert for what, the, what you're looking for. Finally, uh, let's go ahead and start thinking about how we can test the Indeni scripts. Uh, if you haven't yet, you, uh, you may want to start downloading Command Runner, and as we talked about in the past, you will need Java runtime environment. Otherwise, it just will not work. Um, we, ha we have some examples in com uh, Confluence on how to run Command Runner, but for training purposes, we really want to uh, focus on doing single inputs and outputs. And what, that, what I mean by that is that you can run Command Runner to simu and simulate it on a, on a static input text file with the indenti script that you build and uh, leverage that to provide an output to see if it actually works. The reason I bring this up is that sometimes you might need to test it on uh, maybe some devices that you currently don't have access to from uh, the KD lab or it might be remote. Um, if you know what the input looks like or if you can ask, if you know someone that can provide you that input documentation, you can document it, provide it, uh, and then save it as a text file with a dot .input uh, ending and then run command runner to go ahead and parse against that input file. So that's at the bare minimum, that will let you know if the, if the uh, script is actually running or not. So the extra credit. Um, sorry. Um, that's disturbing. <laughs> sorry, I had to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted extra credit here. And the reason why it's so important and why you will really feel just as happy as this girl here is that you'll feel like you're really close to building your own indenti scripts. And the reason why is uh, and the extra credit will, uh, will have you actually start building your own indenti scripts, either using awk, uh, uh, XML, um, or whatever kind of parsing mechanism that's necessary. And then use it against Command Runner to see if it actually provides an output. If it does and you're successful, go ahead and post it on, the Ike, uh, on our Ike discussion forum and uh, have everyone review it. Um, we're really, we really like the idea of 
having everyone take a look at the script, not, you know, to see if you're doing it well or not, but really to see how everyone's approaching this in their own way with scripting. Um, and also just to see if there's some best practices that we could have the whole community enable. So that concludes my component of uh, the module two. Uh, I wanted to leave the questions towards the very end. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, right now is the proper opportunity, uh, the right opportunity to do it.